I just want to go back onto your boxing because I'll tell you what, you, you, I, I think you're an outstanding boxer myself personally. And I've, I've had the privilege of watching you training and I've had the privilege of watching you fighting. Where, where do you go from here, mate? What, what, what's the plan? Because there's one fight that everyone's screaming and everyone on here wants to see it. And that's Canelo. Do you know what that's it is? For, I'll tell you. For me, that's Canelo. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it is. You get a lot of arse lickers and, 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 and arse sniffers in life. Want to be around you for who you are. Oh, yeah, you're going to beat him. You're gonna... I don't need no one to tell me who I can beat and can't beat. I know who I can beat. And I know I can beat Canelo Alvarez. I know that my own. I know that for my own soul. I know I've got the beating of him and I will beat him. But when all these people come around you and feed you all this shit because they just want to be around you and all this rubbish, I can't be doing with that. My boxing speaks for itself. People can say, they can run me down, say this, say that. I've never been beat, and I believe I'll end up unbeaten. You know, you've got some good, good fighters out there, but I know the next thing I want to do is beat the invincible man. You know, Canelo Alvarez. He's the big one they're going on about. You know, uh, <clears throat> I'm lucky enough to have MTK um, guard him in there doing everything to make sure this fight goes ahead and happens. Um, but that's the one I want, because to be the best, you have to beat the best. And, you know, when... When I was coming through the um, the rankings and, and, and even for the British, <laughs> John Ryder's an unbelievable good fighter. But I beat John Ryder when he still had his own, when he didn't know what Lou was, when he didn't know what Lou's was. I beat the loss in him. So people need to look back then. Before that, I boxed Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Again, I'm beaten. My boxing alone and the pedigree that I got from being a young amateur, it would take a lot to untangle me. That's for sure. So why wouldn't I want to fight the best? And that's what I want to do. I have a Golovkin. You know, he's been beat by Alvarez. But if they said to me, right, you're going to fight Golovkin or Alvarez, I'll choose Alvarez. But they're the, they're the two fights I would. You know, all these other big names, these other big superstars that are going on about Danny Jacobs, your, all the other big fighters in the weight, they've had their chance. They've been beat. You know, let me have a chance. If I get beat, I'll get beat. I'm the fairest man in the world. If I get beat by someone who's better than me, I can only shake their hand. You know, but my main goal is to get ginger bollocks in the ring and to see what I can do. <laughs> I'll be up in two minutes, yeah. So, so that, that ideally, would you like to see that fight happening within the next year? Can you see that fight happening within the next uh, year? It's a bit hard for me to say because I think the promoters and the managers and everyone else are, are literally on the blow who's trying to make fights as we speak. But it's then credited in a venue. Um, you know, the capacity of the TV going to pack that are the TV going to back that sort of money for that package of a fight without the crowd in there? I don't know. Is it going to be behind closed doors or do we have to wait when all this is over? So they're the sort of things that we're, we're, we're waiting on the government for, really, rather than the promoters and everybody else. These promoters can say we're looking to do big shows uh, behind closed doors, but really, are there going to be big shows in the back of a garden somewhere? No, they're not. So, you know, and I, I, I've been in the game a long time. You know, I know, I know how the rules work. And it's going to be very difficult to make big, big fights in an empty arena. Very difficult. Fighters will have to take big pay cuts. So, there was a, a, a big fight a couple of weeks ago. I'm obviously a boxing fan, but I'm also a huge UFC fan. And they've managed to do a couple of shows over, I think it was Florida, what do you think? Do you think the guys, uh, there was talked about Eddie Hearn potentially doing a fight behind closed doors. Do you think that'll happen? Well, I think the UFC is a different, even though it's still the combat sport, but I think it's a different business approach. I think in the UFC, they all just don't give a fuck. They just want to get an avatar up and chill out. I mean, I speak to Darren Till a lot and listening to some of the politics when you listen to him talk, you know, it's fucking, it's unfair because they put their life on the line the same as us. If not, probably worse than really, even though they're shorter rounds, but they go in there and have it. And, 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 and the pay the pay that the, F the UFC wants and the pay that some of the fighters want is just a million miles apart. So yeah. I don't when, know when if, it's any when... shows are going to, the big fights, what, we, what the fans want to see. Unless the TV go, well, do you know what? Let's take a gamble. Let's take a punt on it. Let's see how it goes. Let's put a big one on. See how it, see how it gets, people. Is it going to be a lot of pay-per-view buys? That's the only way forward, I think, is, is them taking a chance. But I hope it is this year. Well, I don't know if you saw, but we had uh, John O'Carroll last week. He was a fantastic guest. But we had uh, a guy that I spent a lot of time with, 
uh, Alex Volkanovsky. He was a uh, he's a featherweight champion of the UFC. He was on our first get, and he's just become world champion now. And see, whether you're a boxer or whether you're a UFC fighter, to get to that world title status, that it has to be in you. You know, what, what's your views on that? It, does it have to be in you? Does it have to be inbred in you? Or is it something that you can learn? Again, I'll go back to personality. I don't go back to talent. I'll go back to what people's made of. Because yeah. let's just say, you know, we all, we're all going to run. Leave everybody for that mole. Leave them outside. But when someone gets close to them, you know, squeaky bum time, they start losing it. They, ain't got, they can't cope with the pressure. Boxing, what people don't realise, the general public, boxing comes with big, big pressures. Big pressures. You know, we have to sign we have to sign stuff before we fight and say, if you die, who's your next of kin, who's this and who's that? Because it happens. We've seen it happen. You know, so I think boxing is about what you're made of and the minerals you have. And, you know, again, I'm not going to use... Because when people say, oh, he's a great talent, you know, it's not. It's their personality, what they're made of. You know, they're made of good stuff. And that's the reason why you only see a handful of world champions because not many people's made to be world champion. Well, you had, you had a couple of young uh, fighters saying a big shout out to you. One of them was uh, Leo, uh, what's his surname? Leo uh, Hickley. And there was another one called, uh, what's his name? Patsy Joyce. These are young guys that are looking up to you. What advice will you give these guys, these young guys, up and coming guys that are looking to try and do <clears throat> this in the future? What advice would you give them? Well, I can only talk about the advice that I give the fighter I manage, Dante Dixon. He's a great, great, great talent. You know, he's made of that stuff. I look at him and I think, do you know what? I've seen him spar. I've seen him fight. Um, and I think, do you know what? You've got what it. You've got that stuff inside you. You've got. You're made to be world champion, but he has to be guided right still. You know, we have to look after him. At, you know, and let him have the right fights at the right time. So the only thing that you know I suggest for good young fighters is that once you get with a good team, a good management team and everything sorted was what's there to help and take your problems on sometimes that, you know, when you're, even though you think of the problems, but in this boxing sport, you wouldn't realise the amount of shit and bollocks these fighters talk. They're like fairies, most of them. They want to walk to the ring first. They're not happy with that glove. They're not happy with the size of the ring. They're not happy with the fucking canvas. You get all this rubbish. Listen, get in there, have a fight. If you're good enough, you'll win. You know, that's the main thing. You have to take chances. And a lot of people this damn age, they want to protect and pad their records. That's no good. Yeah. Like, you might look good to the... You might be in a, a bar somewhere. I'm a professional boxer. Yeah, I've had 10 fights, 10 knockouts. But you boxed a load of journeymen. Sometimes you have to take the chance. And it's important to have someone behind you to go, right, now take that chance. Now go. Now's the time. Mm. Don't leave it too late or not too soon. So is that what you're looking to do? Take on more fighters and manage your own fighters now? Is what is that the plan you know in the what? future? It was something that I always wanted to get involved with. Um, you know, I've, I've got um, a good, 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 very good management team behind me in MTK. And I've been advised a lot by, um, he stepped away from it now, is Daniel Kinahan. He's a very, 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 very shrewd man when it comes to knowing when to step on, when to go. I sat back in um, in Spain and watched how we worked with a few fighters, and I was thinking, you know, this fella's never had a fight, but fuck me, like he's guiding these fighters all the way through. He's fucking, he's a very good business head. He's, he knows when to, you know, we will take that fight now, we will take that fight now, and we we we'll leave that now. We we'll get him later. You have to have someone like that behind you, and a team behind you like that that yeah. knows when to let go of the reins. Yeah, you know, because if it was down to me, the money I was getting coming through. Even though I'm the, I'm the, I love to fight, but you know, most fighters now will be happy just getting their money in boxing, stopping a journeyman fighting every other week. Yes, it's good to learn your trade, but once you learn your trade, then you have to take your business to the next level. All right, well, I think I'm that good, so let's let's get it on. Let let, let me fight him. He's unbeaten. I'm unbeaten. Let's get it on. And I think it's important to have someone behind you like that, and that's the reason why I've got my fighter um, like that. Who I managed, Dante Dixon. So, he, so um, is is. Is he the only fighter you've got underneath you now? He's the only, he's the only fighter I've had. I must have had. I must have had. And this is no exaggeration. In the last, since I signed him, I must have had 50 or 60 young fighters ask me to work with them. 
Yeah. Ask me to work. But I only want to work with a small handful that I can... I don't want to promise them stuff I can't deliver. I don't yeah. want to say, right, you're going to be out six times and they're out four because I've let them down. I want to say to a couple of fighters, right, I've got three or four, right, well, I can get you all out. I can get you out four, get you out five and hopefully make that work. I don't like, you know, you hear some of these, I've been through it, I've heard them, you wouldn't believe that, well, you probably wouldn't believe the amount of shit I've heard through my boxing career. But it's not very good when a fighter gets let down. And I would, would never want to let none of my fighters down, ever. Yeah, that's because you've been through it yourself, that's why, isn't it? And it's important to do that. So, you, in terms of your, you know, because obviously, when do you look to get out of the fight game? What, what, what's your plan? When would you like to actually get What's out it? of it? When I first started out, the first thing I said to Frank <coughs> Warren when I first signed him, Frank tried to sign me before I went to um, the Olympic Games. He said, look, I'll give you X amount to stay. Don't go to the Olympics. I'll give you X amount to turn over now. But I went. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of one of them that I want to get out when my brain's all intact, everything, fucking my speech all perfect, I can have a chat to my kids because most of these fighters now, they don't know when enough's enough. The greed takes over. Listen, money's, money is good. Yeah, it's good to have money, but it's not the be all end all things, trust me. Money don't make things perfect, make things happen. And you can have all the money in the world, but if you can't put a sentence together, what good is a penny to you? You know, it's no good. So I want to make sure that I will know when to leave and I know that the people around me will say, do you know what, Billy Joe? It's time to go. Because the people yeah. I've got around me are not yes men and there for the money. People around me are there because they want me to do well. They want me to succeed. They, wanna, they would rather say, we work with him and he's beat Canelo Alvarez, rather than to say, oh, we work with him and we've got three or four million off him. Yeah. Like that, that they want to work with me because they want the best for me, and and you feel that energy off them, and I think that's very important to have. You have to have them sort of people around you. So I reckon my own self, another three year, then that'll do me. Another two or three year, then I'm done. So I, I I like to think that I'm a little bit of an entrepreneur, and I like to get involved with different bits. Do, are you like that? Is that what you do? Do you get involved in investments and? Dealing with property and what, what what do you do? Do you do you reinvest the money that you win from fighting? How do you get on? Uh listen, as a as a as a kid where I come from, come from nothing, you know, brought up on here, and you know, seeing your parents struggle as kids, uh, as being a kid and stuff like that, you know, when you get older, a few quid, you can't be silly with it. So, you know, yeah. most it's of important. my money I get, you know, I put in properties. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm everything. If I can. When I have a fight, the money's just gone in property straight away. Yeah. Because that's for the future. That's what I'm doing. I'm having that fight so I can put my money there. So when I do want to hang up my gloves, I don't want my kids to go through what I went through in a way. You know, I'm not going to say I'm going to give it to them easy because I would never give them easy nah. life. I'll yeah. be down in two seconds. But I want to make them... You've got to know what the kids... You've got to let them know what want is. But I want to give them... If I die tomorrow, I know they're okay. You know, peace of mind. So I could die yeah. happy man. That's that's all. So, yeah, I try to teach my kids uh, to be sensible in situations like that with their money, and mm. um, I like to think I've been sensible of mine. Yeah, because you see a lot of the fighters, and you see them driving flash cars and bits and pieces, and they're sort of chasing it, then aren't they? And uh, they have to chase the money, and uh, and that's one thing that you know I've said to a couple yeah. of the guys that I've sort of mentored. It's, it's, it's no good driving a Rolls Royce and going home to a council else. In a way. You know, if you've earned millions of pounds, not that there's nothing wrong living there because my parents live on a council site. But what I'm saying is, is nothing... You can't, you can't have it all. You've got to be a little bit... Uh, you've got to be a little bit... Thingy, Bob. Who's this guy? So someone's pulled up showing me a live video. <laughs> someone's just pulled up there and showed me me going live. There you go. Yeah, so... It's so, very so, important that these fighters, I see a lot of it, and do you know what? It's very sad to see, and that's something that do scare me, because I see all these fighters that's coming through, like when I was making my debut. I see all these young fighters at the time, season pro, earn loads of money, and I just look at them now, and I think, you know, it's, it's, they've been, they've, they've been I'm, I'm fairly and illly advised, but thankfully, my dad had his head screwed on bringing me up, and he, he taught me right, so... 
I can only thank him for that. And, you know, I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful for what I got today. And, you know, I'm not greedy. I, I don't, I want more, more, more. I'm very happy and content. And, you know, I'm happy. I've got a nice life. So, would you, would you allow your boys to get in the ring and fight? I would. I would do. I would. They go boxing now. They all do boxing. Um, but it's a very hard living to do. What are you off to? It's a very hard living to do. You know, I wouldn't want to go through certain things for, for the peanuts sometimes that fighters have got yeah. to go through. But well, look. I've got, in the Saunders generation, the next baton, come here, Bill. This is a live video. Come here. Just come here. This is, put that, turn that around. Put, turn that around so they see there. Put it on, right? The next generation was coming through, and the next world champion is this man, Bill. Let's have a look, Bill. On Instagram here, look. I swear to God. Let's, let's see a few... Let's see a few shots from Bill. Let's see. He's Let's man. see the boy. The He's the next boy out. This man. He's the. Uh, we'll have to give. We'll have to give him a shout. What's his name? He's the next family pension fund. Well, there you go. Right. Well, you got. A, you've been a busy man. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for having me on today, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure, and hopefully we can do it again when you're near one of your big fights. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you and thank all the guys for joining.